and the stalk of the leaf is called as petiole. Petiole. So this is the petiole and this is the lamina. Right. There are some more parts in the leaf that you if you observe it closely. If you have a magnifying glass, just you can observe what are the other parts in the leaf that you can see with the help of a magnifying glass or with a naked eye. If you observe a leaf, there you will find a deep line at the center of the leaf. It, it, you can observe this deep line if you observe the leaf from its underside. Right? If you turn the leaf upside down on the back side, you can find a thick elongated structure which is dividing the leaf into two that is called as midrib. That is called as midrib. Right? And if you take a bunion leaf or if you take a paper leaf and you take a paper, you put the paper on the paper leaf, better on the back side of the paper leaf and you trace it with the help of a pencil. Then you will find some sketching like this. You will find a sketching like this. This is the paper leaf. You will find a sketching like this. Oh, you can find so many lines over there. So what are these lines? Those lines you can feel with your hand also. If you take a dried paper leaf and if you just touch it on the back side, under surface of the leaf, then you will find so many lines like this. And all these are called as veins. They are the network of pipes which are connected to the vessels of the stem. What is their function? How they are useful? They are helpful in the conduction of water. So the leaf, it has got a network of veins for the supply of water and minerals to the leaf. So that is the veins. So in these veins, we find a main or major vein which is extending from the petiole to the tip of the leaf that is called as midrib, as I have written here. Right? So the pattern of leaves the pattern of veins inside the leaf is called as leaf venation. Generally, we find two different types of venation in leaves. What is that venation? Let's see. In some leaves, see this leaf, here the veins, they erase at the petiole and extends till the end of the leaf, tip of the leaf. There are no branches. You cannot see the branching of the vein. The veins, they run parallel to each other. The veins, they run parallel to each other. This is called as parallel venation. This is especially seen in the plants like grass, rice, wheat, maize, Sugarcane, in all these cases, we find parallel venation. So, the second case, here you find a leaf. So, in the leaf, you will find the veins, subveins, and veinlets. So, likewise, there is a branching. This is called as reticulate venation. Reticulate venation. So, reticulate venation is seen in the trees like papal tree, banyan tree, mango, guava. So in all these cases, we find the reticulate venation. Okay. So this is all about the appearance of the leaf. And you know one more thing, that leaf, it consists of chlorophyll. And the leaf, it also consists of small pores on the underside of the leaf called as stomata. So this is all about the physical appearance of the leaf. Now let us see the functioning of the leaf. Yes, the major function of the leaf is to prepare the food. Right, for the plant, the food is prepared inside the leaf. Leaf is the factory. Leaf is the food factory of the plant because the food is manufactured there. So do you know with what materials a leaf prepares the food? It uses sunlight, 
carbon dioxide and water. With these three ingredients, a leaf can make food in the form of glucose. So glucose is the food which is prepared from carbon dioxide, sunlight and water. Now let's see how this is done and let's see whether really these three are important to the plant or to the leaf to make the food or not. Now let us see the various process that takes place inside the leaf. Leaves carry out transpiration and leaves carry out photosynthesis. First let us discuss about the transpiration. So it is a process which is similar to your breathing. What do you do? You breathe in, breathe out the air, right? So we are breathing in and breathing out air. What is the difference? Do you find any difference in your breath? Let's see, when you take in the air, just you take air which is rich in oxygen. And when you breathe out, you leave the air which is filled with carbon dioxide collected from your lungs. At the same time, the air that you breathe out, it will be having water vapor. You can feel that. So some water vapor you are leaving. From where this water vapor comes from? That comes from a process called as respiration inside you. So from there the water vapor comes out. Right. So in the same way, a plant also releases some water vapor through its pores. I already told you the leaves have got pores called as stomata. So through stomata, the leaves, they leave out water vapor. A plant constantly loses water vapor. So this water vapor, it might be produced during the photosynthesis and whatever the water is being absorbed by the plant, some of the water is evaporated into the atmosphere and that process is called as transpiration. Right? So transpiration is a process in which water is released out of the leaves in the form of water vapor. So this we can observe it practically, prove it practically. So for this you need to have a polythene sheet, a polythene cover. Now, you take the twigs of a herb, any herbal plant, any herb and you keep the twigs inside the cover and close that for some time. You will find that the water droplets are collected inside. You can observe the similar thing when you go to a flower bouquet shop. The flower bouquets are kept in the polythene covers. If you observe closely, there you find tiny droplets of water that is water vapor released by the flowers and leaves. Right? And if you go to a a vegetable shop in sometimes if you go to buy some curry leaves or coriander such greeny vegetable leafy vegetables that are packed in polythene bags you can find that water droplets are collected so all this shows that the leaves they release some water vapor and that process is called as transpiration there are so many uses with this process because of transpiration a plant is able to get water from the ground Right. Okay. So that is the process by which it balances the amount of water in its body. Okay. So let us go to the next one, photosynthesis. So I told you that photosynthesis is a process of food preparation in plant that is in the leaf. I told you the raw materials. A leaf, it needs carbon dioxide, water and sunlight to make the food in the process of photosynthesis. So a leaf, it obtains the sunlight, it absorbs the sunlight by its surface. Leaf has got tiny pores called as stomata through which it absorbs the carbon dioxide. And the leaf, with the help of veins network, it is connected to the stem, it gets the water. So it is obtaining all the ingredients. And what food it is preparing? It is preparing a food called as glucose and the glucose is changed to starch. That means a leaf if you say a leaf is preparing the food, a leaf is carrying out photosynthesis, it should contain some starch. Right, then how do you test it? Yes, we can test a leaf for the presence of starch. How can we do that? What do we need? We need some materials to do the test for starch. Test for starch. What materials you need? You need a test tube. some alcohol and a beaker with water and a burner. Now what you do is that take the water beaker onto a burner. Now take a test tube filled with the leaf and alcohol. So see that the leaf is completely merged in the alcohol 
and the alcohol is placed in the test tube. Now the test tube is kept in the water, water bath. We call it as a water bath. As it is involved, fire, alcohol, you should be very, very careful and you should not do this on your own. You are not supposed to do this on your own. So this activity has to be done by the teacher only for demonstration. Just you see that while your teacher does this activity for you because it involves two inflammable things, the fire, the burner and alcohol, very dangerous, catches the fire so quickly, right. So the test tube is filled with alcohol and it is placed in the water. You observe this point, the alcohol test tube is not directly kept in flame, it catches the fire. So it is kept in water bath. So now the water and alcohol both are allowed to boil for some time, then the test tube is removed, the leaf is removed, the leaf is washed in water and put some iodine to see whether it has got starch or not. So what is the indication? If the leaf turns to dark blue color, it indicates it has got starch. So somebody may put you a question, yes, the leaf has got starch, I believe that, I agree with that. But what is the proof that leaf has prepared the starch? I don't agree. The starch might have come from the stem or from the root to the leaf. The leaf itself has not prepared the starch. Somebody may put the question like this. We have one more activity to disprove his statement. We can prove that the food, the starch is prepared in the leaf itself. So what is that activity? Let's see. So now see this activity by which we can prove that the food is prepared inside the leaf. It's not supplied from any other part of the plant. So here we need a leaf which is attached to a plant. Do not pluck the leaf. So what you're going to do is that you're going to cover some part of the leaf. You're not covering the whole leaf. Just you're covering a part of the leaf. Just take some cardboard and cover part of the leaf. So cover it on both sides. That is on the upper side. Just you take a cardboard. So which is having the similar kind of shape on the back side also. Just you take it like a clip. You fix it to the leaf, leave it in the sun for one day, right? So after that you remove the leaf and you remove the cover, the part which you have covered. Now again perform the alcohol test to the leaf, right? We have seen how to do the test. Take a beaker, take a test tube with alcohol, put the leaf in the alcohol, put the test tube in the beaker with water and allow it to boil for some time, take out the leaf, wash it in water and apply some iodine. Then if it turns to dark blue color, it indicates that it has got starch. So now what happens is that if this leaf is tested for starch and starch is applied, iodine is applied, then you find all this turns to blue except this. That area remains no change in color. What does it indicate? It indicates that in this particular area, there was no photosynthesis because that particular area is missing something, some ingredient. What is that? Sunlight. Why it's missing sunlight? Because we covered it. As we have covered it, that area could not get the sunlight. So what happened? There was no photosynthesis. So this proves that photosynthesis takes place in the leaf. Preparation of starch takes place in the leaves. Right? So here in this particular part of the lesson, we have identified the structure and functioning of the leaf. So we have seen stem and leaf. Next, we are moving to the next important part, root of the plant. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.